Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Terramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Terramina, blog around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Queen Terramina's an Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on Oriented Television. A lot to talk about this week here on the pod here. Um, obviously, we got some basketball news to talk about here. Um, we're going to preview the... Um, Oakland, we're going to preview the Oxford Invitational coming up this weekend. I know there's a lot of OA teams that are involved in that. Um, but let's talk about our main story here. Obviously, the main one has to be over at Groves. Um, this was just just within the next last 24 hours. Um, the big news here it has to be um, um, Allison Heidi stepping down at Groves. Um, I think, you know, when you look at... Um, It'll be interesting to see how um it'll be interesting to see how um Groves does um with it the, with their coaching search considering you know um Tom Plinder, athletic director is no longer I mean he's gonna be retiring at the end of the year um and you know and obviously you look at here um with with um Heidi stepping down um she was twenty five and forty four in her three years coaching at Groves um. She took over for Coach Antoine Simpkins um, three years ago. Of course, now Simpkins is now at um, Simpkins is now at um, Detroit Cast Tech, and um, we know how that um, we know how that went. Um, he led that team to a regional um, to a regional semifinal appearance. Um, so when I look at um, so when I look at the um, so when I look at the um, you know what, what? What Heidi brought to the team, um, she brought in like a sense of calmness. Um, obviously, you know when you look at what happened with Simpkins. Um, you know, I mean, like I know that I know with that issue, and we we talked, and it's been well publicized. Um, but when you look at what she did at Groves, I mean, taking over a team that was in a um, kind of like in a you know, they were, you know, you kind of look at, there was a mass exodus of people transferring out. Um, she stabilized things. Um, you know, when you look at the record, um, you know, you look at the record and results, it's not been there. But when you look at the, um, you know, just the product that she brought, I mean, obviously you look at the players that she had. Um you know, obviously, um, you know, obviously you look at what Groves did. Um, they did, you know, they did a nice job with everything they have. I mean, like, obviously, with what they have. And, you know, you look at first year for them being in the red, um, going up against the likes of um, of Clarkston, West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, um, Rochester, Stony Creek. Um, you, you know, and then, you know, and... I think I mentioned West Bloomfield. Um, that's not an easy feeling if you're going in, if you're a new coach going into the first, going into your first year, being in the red, um, going up against the, the likes of those perennial powers in the division. Um, so Groves really struggled. Um, and then they went to the white, um, had a much, had a, had a better year um, in Heidi's third year. Um, this, I mean, they had that big one against Royal Oak, um, which got them, you know, which, which earned them, which earned them a, a, the, um, a big win at the time. I mean, forced Royal Oak to be the number two seed in their district at Warren Cousineau. And lo and behold, I mean, like you look at um, what happened there. Um, I mean, like Royal Oak ended up winning that district and they knocked off Groves, um, 57 45 in the district semifinals. So when I look at Groves, um, you know, and I'm curious to see with the talent pool they got. I mean, they got a star player in the making. Um, I think her name is Harlem Barnett. Um, so when I look at, I mean, like, I, I put a comment on the blog. Um, the, um, it was confirmed by Tom Flynn, of course, the athletic director, Adam. It was confirmed by the athletic director at Groves. Um, as I mentioned earlier, um, 
you know, um, it'll be interesting to see what direction Groves goes with. I mean, you really look at, um, you know, you really look at, um, actually, I take that back and the correction of the score was 47-35 was the score. Um, I do remember last year Groves um, had a really good team, um, had a good chance to knock out Burnley Marion, but lost a heartbreaker um, last season in the district final, uh, in the first round. Uh, actually, in the district semifinals, um, where they lost that one 30 29. So that was a really difficult loss for them. Um, you look at a player like Harlem Simpson. Um, that was the one I was mentioning. Um, Simpson had a nice year this year for Grove. She had a really nice year. Um, you put her together with JC Roy. Um, you know, you have Anaya White, Sophie Stronic, and Michael White all coming back. Um, but obviously. Whoever the new coach is is going to have a really good nucleus of guards, especially with Simpson and um, Roy. Um, Roy, I've been really high on for a long time with um, with Groves, and I think really that's going to be the key heading into next year. Is can um, you know whoever the new coach is, can she can they take over? You know what I mean? Can they? keep where things have been going real smooth for Groves. And I think that's really going to be the key going forward for them is can they like, um, you know, can Flynn, you know what I mean? Make, you know what I mean? Obviously, can he make the decision of whoever's taking over that program? Um, obviously you look at, you know, obviously you look at program strength is a big concern with Groves. You look at a, you look at building the, it's going to be interesting to see how um, this team does. It'll be really interesting to see um, what type of structure it's going to be um, over there. So a lot of challenges loom for Groves, and I think that's going to be the key going forward is can the Falcons, um, can the Falcons find a way, you know what I mean? You know, obviously I expect them to still be competitive, um, in the white, um, considering there's been a lot of changeover in this division, um, when you look at the teams that are in this division heading into next year, I mean, obviously, you look at Royal Oak, they're still in the division. They still got a lot coming back um, after graduating a heavy, heavy group of proven experience from a team that went to the regional final a year, I mean, last season. Obviously, when you look at what Royal Oak did, um, they made that run to, you know, winning at district final, um, knocking off Warren Cousin on a buzzer beater, um, and then upsetting Gross Point North, which I I still cannot believe to this day, you know, that Royal Oak would go in there and do it. Because I'll be honest, with you, I thought in that district, I thought Gross Point North um, would just easily just hand a Royal Oak. I mean, like, and I'll admit that on air because... Yeah, but Royal Oak, they're still going to be a team to beat. Um, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. I mean, like, I think, honestly, um, this Royal, I mean, Royal Oak will be a team to really, really watch for um, heading into next year. And I think that's going to be the key. And I think, you know, and I think they're, they're one of the teams to really watch for. Um, another team to watch for is Groves' is arch rival, See him. So, last season... You know, Seaholm beat Grobes. And, you know, obviously you look at what Seaholm's got. Proven experience coming back. Led by Addie Flynn. Um, I think it's going to be a really interesting um, dynamic for um, for um, Grobes. Especially when they have to deal with Coach Chris Manchester and his team. Um, so that's going to be something to really watch for there. Is can, um, you know... Can Groves turn that rivalry back into their favor? I mean, they've kind of done it in the boys. Um, and then, obviously, you know, with football. But, you know, in Austin awesome Volleyball, that's always been a really interesting rivalry in volleyball between Groves and Seaholm. Um, but in girls basketball, there was a time that Seaholm, I mean, that Groves was dominant. And, you know, and then now you look at, with Seaholm, um, I think Seaholm right now looks like they're gonna be the team to beat. I mean, they got to a um they made a district they uh, made the district final a year ago. 
Um, lost a tough one to Bloomfield Hills. Um, and speaking of Bloomfield Hills, I mean, they're another team that's going to be in the division. Um, when I look at Bloomby Hills, obviously they made that run, that special run they had last year. Um, now, I've been hearing a lot of rumblings that Chris and Massey is not coming back. Um, I can't verify that yet. Um, I can't confirm that if she's not coaching the team. Um, I would like to hear if if that is the case. Um, you know, if on my blog at Saginaw for the blogspot.com or also on my Twitter feed, um, I'm at Saginaw Bay. So, you know, I've been hearing a lot of rumblings over at Bloomfield Hills um, that Massey might be out at Bloomfield Hills. So, you know, I just want to know if it's confirmed or not. But, you know, it'll be very interesting to see. But Bloomfield Hills, obviously, you got to start playing Michelle Barrett coming back. Um, and I think the Blackhawks are a team that, you know, they may, I mean, they got program strength. They're well coached. Um, but Bloomfield Hills could be a serious player. Um next year and I expect they're gonna be a dangerous, dangerous team when I look at Bloopy Hills hanging the next year. Um and then there's Rochester. I mean Rochester um Rochester obviously you look at the storylines there. Um you know and then when you look at the Falcons um they got Alice Max, Kylie Robinson. Um obviously Coach Bill Durson's no longer over at Rochester. Um, they are looking for a new coach over there. Um, so when I look at Rochester, um, could they take the Stony Creek route? I don't think that would be the case. I, I, I don't think that should be the case. I don't, I don't think that's a wise choice if they take that route. Um, but you do return, you do have Kylie Robinson, Alice Max for one more year. Um, Emma Max coming in, coming in, um, you know, I think she's going to be a player to watch for Lucy Cook, obviously. If, I mean, there's, there's a lot of questions surrounding Lucy Cook. Um, so when I look at Rochester, um, I think guard play is going to be the key. Whoever the new coach is over there at Rochester is there are some, there are some options there considering with their JV program. I'm um, obviously Jeff Haney. Did a really nice job with their JV program. Um, so we don't know where Rochester stands when it comes to, um, you know, they got a lot of questions um, to really watch for. Who's, I mean, obviously, whoever takes that job, um, you know, they got program strengths. Um, but who, I mean, Coach Thurston did a really nice job building that program. But there is going to be some question marks over there with Rochester, um, considering, you know, obviously going down from the red. Um, Rochester, I expect them to be one of the top teams, but guard play is still going to be a question mark for Rochester. Whoever the new coach is, whoever takes over that job, um, so we'll see how it goes. So we'll see how that goes. And, you know, we'll see how... We'll see how that one goes over there. And then there's Troy. Um, when I look at Troy, um, I think with the Colts, um, you know, when you look at Troy, obviously you it starts with the talent pool they got there. I mean, you look at the, the um, up-and-coming players. You look at a Diamond Prince. I mean, Diamond Prince had an incredible year last year. Um, you look at a Carly Higginbottom in the interior. You have Reagan Zider, who can shoot you threes. You have Kelsey Block, who's a defensive stopper. You have Al Samasis, who can, or Al Kekamakis, who can also play, you know what I mean, who's a solid defender. You got uh, you got several others as well, and that's not counting Macy Zider, who's also coming in the program. I mean, we know what Macy Zider has done. I mean, look what she's done in the AU circuit. I mean, like, she's playing she's playing against, against girls that are like, um, Two grades higher. I mean, like, you know, in the in the AU circuit. That's insane. I mean, so when you look at what Macy Zetter can bring, I mean, she'll probably be up on varsity for Coach Laura Guzman. Um, but you know, you really look at that division right now and say to yourself, okay, if your Groves is your division's gonna be stacked, it's gonna be loaded um with those teams in there. Um 
So there's going to be some challenges for Groves um, in that division. So I still think Troy is going to be the team to beat in that division. I mean, when you really look at the Colts, um, you know, Troy to me, um, you know, especially the experience they got, um, honestly, you know, when they got the number one seed, I kind of thought about, you know, I mean, what Troy, I, I kind of thought about, was, um, you know, I kind of thought was, okay, you're going to get top seed. They're going to get number one seed. They're going to compete. Um, you know, and then they play Boombie Hills um, in the uh, district semifinals. And, you know, things did not go well for them, obviously. You know, I don't know if it was being in the blue. Um, you know, obviously, you know, just some more life lessons for that team. Um you know, and I think Troy right now, when I look at the Colts, um, they're going to be a scary group. They're going to be a scary group. I think Troy, they're a team that can really do some damage. And if this team can do some damage, obviously, when you look at the emergence of the Ziders, then you have Diamond Prince, um, Higginbottom in the interior. Then you have, like, um, an Ali Mantuza who can also play in the interior. Um, obviously, with them. Um, Coach Guzman's um, four guard, one big set. Um, Kelsey blocks a solid defender. They got playmakers on that team. They got some depth, but the question's going to be for Troy is going to be is can they build that program strength? Um, that is going to be the big challenge for them. Um, obviously, you know, I mean, they're going to have a really good varsity team um, for sure. And but if you're Coach Guzman, you got to have to make that next step. So. We'll see what happens there with um with Troy. Um, I really think the Colts are going to be a team that they're going to be an interesting team to watch. And I think with them, um, I think with them, it's going to be interesting to see how Troy does. Um, we'll see. I mean, we will see. Um, but for Groves going forward, it's going to come down to is, you know, obviously you look at the program. Um, you got good kids in that district over there, and uh, you got good kids at Groves. You got you got athletes over there in Beverly Hills. Um, so whoever takes the job, the big question I have for them is going to be the interior play. Um, and I I really think for Groves, it's just trying to change a culture around. You know what I mean? Where they've really struggled um, maintaining success and. You know, that's going to be the key heading in for the next year is can Groves f maintain, find a way to find success. Um, because you knew that, you know, when um, when the changeover happened, you know, that was going to be a transition period, and it happened during the year. Um, you know, and they had some players. I mean, I mean, like, I find, I mean, like, Caitlin Sanders was one of the, um, was a very solid player for Groves. I mean, she was a very good player for them. Um, you know, they had um they had to replace her this year, um, this past year. And um, you know, I think with them it's gonna come down to is can the Falcons, um, you know, can they, I mean they obviously got that player in the making. Um in Harlem Simpson. Um they have and then obviously with JC Roy there. So, you know, they got the guards. But the questions the wings, question the interior, question the bigs, um if this team can find a way to do it, um, then I think Groves will be a, um, they're going to be a really dangerous team um, going forward. And I think that'll be something to really, really watch for um, when it comes to um, Groves. And I think, you know, and I, and, I, and I think they got a chance to be good. I mean, but when I look at that division right now, I still think it's Troy and Seaholm are going to be the two top teams. Royal Oak is also going to be in there as well. Um, and then obviously Rochester. So Groves could be in for a long year. I mean, they could really much be in for a long year considering the teams that are in that division. Um, I mean, and then you have Boston Bloomby Hill. So it would not surprise me if they finish last next year, but it also wouldn't surprise me if this team finishes in the middle of the pack. So, you know, so there's a lot of questions with Groves. Um, you know, so there's going to be a lot of questions with them. So 
we'll see what happens going forward with them. But I think with Groves, it's going to come down to is can the Falcons build a, um, you know, is can the Falcons develop interior play, develop program strength? They do. I think they're going to be a very good team. I mean, they'll be a solid team. So we'll see what happens going forward with Groves. All right, now let's go from um, let's go from from basketball to track and field here. Obviously, the um one of the um previews we're gonna preview is the um Oakland count as the um, Oxford Invitational. It's one of my favorites to preview it because there's a lot of OA teams that are well represented in this meet. Um, obviously there is um you got Avondale here, you got um Berkeley's here, Grove, Seahome, Bloomfield Hills, Clarkston, Farmington, Ferndale. Ferndale's here, um, Lake Orion's here, you got Oak Park, Oxford, Pontiac, Adams, Stony Creek, Troy, Troy, Athens, um, and West Bloomfield are the OA representation here um, for this meet. So it's it's an interesting meet. It's a fun meet, actually, too, to be um to watch. And I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how um how they match up. Um obviously when you look at you know, teams that could be favored to really watch for. Um, um, I, I think, you know, obviously you look at on the girls' side of things, you look at Clarkston, obviously they're a team to really keep an eye on. Lake Orion's another one to keep an eye on as well. Um, but Oak Park, you know, Oak Park's got, I mean, obviously they're defending, they're defending state champions in girls' track. Um, it'll be interesting to see how... Um, It'll be really interesting to see how Oak Park does this because I know Coach Giles very well. And they'll like to use their hurdles. They'll like to use the sprint relays. And I expect them they're going to use them. So that's going to be interesting to see how this one goes. Um, when I look at, and when I look at the um, previews coming in, um, and I, you know, and I think, you know, obviously, um, you know, when you look at, of course, when you're simulating this, I mean, like, it has to be, it's going to be interesting to see how, um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see how you simulate this. I mean, you know, obviously you look at, you know, you look at on the, um, on the girls' side of things, you look at, of course, the favorite has to be Chelsea. I mean, I mean, like so far this year, I mean, they got a girl right now, 819. I mean, Midland Dallas coming in second. I mean, Lake Orion with Sabrina DiMaggio right now. I mean, she's projected to finish third right now in this. Um, so obviously it'll be interesting to see, but I think a team watch for Chelsea in this, um, invitational. I really think so. Um, but when you look at Oak Park, obviously the favorite, obviously, um, in the 100 Troy Athens with, I mean, with Nevada Burns there projected showing a freshman, um, Maddie Protersky from, um, Troy Athens project finished second Cameron Tatum of West Bloomfield. Um, was off is tied right now. Um, she's one of the favorites in that. Um, in that, and then the two hundred meter. Um, obviously Morgan Roundtree of Oak Park. Um, we know how good she is. And then Curry Van Noy, um, only a junior, projected to finish third. Uh, Midland Dows, um, Emma Thomas projected to finish second. Um, and then you look at um, in the and then you look at um, so when you look at um, and then also you have a. Um, Bianca Evoluta of Farmington and um, London James of West Bloomfield project to finish top five. So it'll be very interesting. 400 meter, obviously, the Maya Burns favorite of Oak Park. Um, Danisha Kellogg, um, only a junior, project to finish second. Um, and then obviously, you have Maddie Petrusky of um, Troy Athens and the Cameron Tatum of West Bloomfield project to finish fourth and fifth. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how um how this goes. Um, eight hundred meter Kylie King favored um of Oak Park. Um, Romeo's expected to score big points as long Midland down the eight in the eight hundred meter. Um, in the mile you got to give Midland down the favorite there. I mean followed by Romeo. Um, with Anna Habarowski, um, only a freshman. Hannah DeRock of Lake Orion um projected to finish third. Followed by Natalia Garrasho and uh, of Romeo, and then um, Leah Corby of Stony Creek, um, and then and then of course in the um, in the mile, um, and then you look at in the two mile, um, 
Midland Dow, Romeo, Lake Orion. It'll be interesting to see how this goes here. Um, and then, of course, in the 100 hurdles, um, obviously, you got Oak Park favored there, loading up there with them, Roundtree, Van Noy, and Jada Watson there. Um, Sabrina DiMaggio of Lake Orion projected to finish fifth. Um, but Oak Park really loaded right now when you look at look at I'm reading the previews right now the 300 hurdles um you got jail marks of um of West Bloomfield followed by Karad Dwyer of Oxford um followed by um you know Evan Goge of Romeo um Caitlin Porek of um Clarkston and um Leila Wells of um Chelsea wraps up the um top um the top um five there um these are all according to athletic.net so so Apologize if I'm looking at my phone here, looking at it here. Um, Troy Athens has to be the favorite when it comes to the 4 by one followed by Fenton. Groves is third. West Bloomfield, fourth. And then, um, you know, and I guess, um, you know, and I get, I mean, like, you know, and I think that'll be very interesting to see here. Um, and then you look at the 4 by 2 um, 4 by 2 obviously Lake Orient's a favorite there. Um, actually, no, um, Oak Park is favored in the 4 by 2 Um, Lake Orion projected finish number two. Um, West Bluefield, three. Berkeley, four. And, um, Clarkston, fifth. So, that 4 by 2 could be really interesting. Um, and then the 4 by 4 Oak Park is favored, followed by Lake Orion. Um, Ann Arbor, Huron, third. Um, Chelsea, Ford, Farmington, fifth. So... And then the 4x8, um, Lake Orion favored. Um, Ann Arbor Huron, number two. Um, Romeo, number three. And Adams, number four. Um, so, it'll be really interesting to see how how this goes. So, really interesting. And then shot, and then the field events, obviously. You look at shot put. Um, Abigail Russell of Allen Park. I mean, like, my goodness. I mean, she threw a 40 Five five this season for Allen Park, one of the best in the state of Michigan. Um, Destiny DeJarrett of Hazel Park from the second at thirty seven feet. Anna Brandt of Chelsea through thirty five eight. Um, Emily Bonner of um of Midland Dow thirty five four and two. Um, and Corey and Hutton of New Baltimore Anchor Bay throwing thirty five two this year. Discus Russell obviously favored. Um, Skylar Hallibrook of um, of White Lake Lakeland was projected finish second at one fourteen. Molly Sosha of Bluefield Hills projected finish third one thrown one twelve. Bella DeLong um, thrown one oh nine for Lake Orion, and um, Addison Strornberg of um, Farm Tales Mercy throwing um, um, one oh five. I mean high jump. Um, Mercy's favored there. Um, Allen Park project finished second. Mercy got third. Ann Arbor here on fourth. Clarkson with Carsey Collins, um, projected to finish fifth at jumping at five feet. Pole vault, um, this is where pole vault gets counted. Um, so pole vault, it does get counted here. So Gina Golob of Clarkson is the favorite right now at jump 10 6. Um, Amira Luke of Allen Park. Um, 10-1. Sabrina DiMaggio of Lake Orion projected to finish third with 10 feet. Olivia Bagnerson, um, 9-6. And then um, Carly Remora of Chelsea jumping at 9 feet in the pole vault. And then long jump, Anaya Billups of, of North Farmington is the favorite. Layla Thomas of Lake Orion projected to finish second. Kristen Losey of Troy projected to finish third. Ariana Glass of Watford Kettering projected to finish fourth. And Gianna um, Golob of Clarkston projected to finish fifth, um, jumping at 15 feet. So when I look at the teams that are favored in this, Oak Park has to be the favorite because of the they have loaded up the hurdle events. They've loaded up the um, sprint events. Um, obviously, that's always been their bread and butter of success. So... That'll be really interesting to see how um that'll be interesting to see how that um translates. But right now, if I had to pick a team right now that has to be favored right now, 
Um, it would be Oak Park, but I think Lake Orion's got a chance in this one. Clarkson's got a chance in this one. Um, Romeo is another team that I think's got a great chance in this one as well. So we'll see how it goes. I mean, we'll see how this one goes. All right, let's go to the boys now. Um, as mentioned, this is going to be a really interesting one, the boys side of things here. Um, early favorite has to be Warren D. LaSalle in this event. Micah Walker, project finish first, followed by his teammate, um, Dalton DeRoche, um, DeGroche, um, Evan Watson of Troy Athens, project finish third, Gavin Rolf, project finish fourth, Sean Blitzer of Midland Dow, project finish fifth. 200 dash, um, DeGrosse, um, obviously from D. LaSalle's favorite. Devin James of West Bloomfield, project finish second. Um, James Wallace of Warren D. LaSalle, project finish third. Miles Dewberry of Allen Park, project finish fourth. And Aston Brown of Ann Arbor here, project to finish um, fifth. So we'll see how that one goes. A 400 meter favorite has to be Clarkson. Obviously, Wendell Childs, we know how good he's been. Um, and then Evan Watson of Troy Athens, project finish second. Um, Philip Bernie um, has the third best time right now for Oak Park. Um, Jackson Hayward projected finish fourth at 50.91, and then Rondre Austin at 51.19. So, project of of Oak Park. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, in the 400 meter, um, 800 meter, Adams has to be favored. Fernand Vernick 158. Um, Bryce Nolak of Clarkson 159. Um, Louis De Souza. A Troy, 2 minutes, 27 seconds. Bryce Gutzel of Romeo, 2 minutes, 83 seconds. And then James Kuzak of Oxford, um, 2 minutes and 88 seconds. So, interesting to see how that one goes. The one mile, um, Rochester's the favorite here. Ferdinand Vercek, um, actually, no, of, of, of Adams, he threw four, he ran 4.22.19. Chelsea. Favorite take for the second, 425. James Kuzak of Oxford. Uh, project finished third with um, 427. Vincent Gersmano of Romeo, 429. And then um, Viasha Raxier of Troy projected to finish fifth at 430. So, really interesting here. Two mile, um, Oliver Moss of Berkeley. Checked in his best time right now at 931. Vivasha Rakshir of Troy, um, 934.75. Connor Al Alford of Chelsea, 935.02. Andrew Flores of Clarkston, um, 940.58. And Ty Levison of Bloomfield Hills, um, 941.87. I mean, um, and then we have the um, hurdles here. We got the, um, we got the 110s. Um, Kingston Magnite of Stevenson, 1771. Ryder Reese of Troy Athens, 1771. Austin Watford of Utica, 18 flat. Richard Washington of Hazel Park, 1811. Maxwell Jones, 1946, also from Hazel Park. Um, 110, I mean, like, and then um, the 200 hurdles. Kingston uh, Magnite um, has to be the favorite right now um, from Sterling Heights Stevenson, 2891. Richard Washington of Hazel Park, project finished second. Austin Watford from Utica, third. Lucas Chebrock of Troy Athens, fourth. And Ethan Hanner of Troy Athens, um, projected finish um, fifth um, with um, 34 flat. So we'll see what happens there. Um, four by one. West Bloomfield, obviously top team to beat, followed by Wall Lake Western. North Farmington is project finished third. Um, Oak Park project finished fourth. Wall Lake Western project to finish fifth. Um, and then you have the um, and then you have the four by two here. Oak Park project finished first. Wall Lake Western second. Fenton third. Farmington fourth. Clarkston fifth. Um, four by four, Troy Athens is favored, Clarkson second, um, Adams third, Oak Park fourth, and, um, Rochester Adams, this B team, um, looks like they're fifth, so, 
We'll see how that one goes. Four by eight. Um, Troy's favored, followed by Troy Athens. Um, then Troy's got a B team here. Um, Romeo projected finish fourth, and then Troy Athens B team projected finish fifth. So we'll see what happens there. Um, then let's go to the field events here. Um, shot put here, obviously. Groves is favored. Omari. Omari Hexton, obviously we know how good Groves' throws team's been all year. Um, he's projected, he's he's thrown 53 feet 5. Um, Liam Vaughn of Wall Lake Western, 53 feet 3 and a half. Um, Andre Newman of Lakeland, 52 7 and a half. Ryan Ross of Warren D. South, 47 5. And um, Dwayne Brom of West Bloomfield, 40, 46 Six. So really interesting. Discus obviously Newman is favored. Um from Lakeland 167. Liam Vaughn second with 160. Ray Glory of Groves um 153 2. Drew Wojowski of Wall Lake Western predicament fourth with 151. Nick Wachensko of Clarkston 145 9. So and then high jump. Um and then high jump, Andrew Harding of Ann Arbor Huron and, Ch and Charlie Gardner. Both Ann Arbor Huron has one, two. In this, Reggie Hinton of Bloomfield Hills finished third. We know Hinton, of course, played basketball this year. Um, Caleb Metcalf of Flushing finished fourth. And Caleb Erkson of Sterling Heights Stevenson finished fifth at 6 2. Um, pole vault, um, Chelsea is the favorite here. Nolan Fleitzer, 12 6. Matthew Mizzy of Allen Park, Rick finished second. Dominic Walker, Rick finished third of Allen Park. Um, and then you have Tyler Mullen of Lake Orion on 12 1. And Alexander um, Vows of Flushing, 12 feet. So, and long jump here. Um, Ann Arbor Huron has the first two here. Um, Rivera, 23 feet. Charlie Gardner, 22 feet in the five. Um, Pret. Preston Gardner from North Farmington, 21-11. Um, Chris and Kilpatrick um, from Fenton, jumped 21-7 and a half. And Jaden Belton, flushing 21-5. Um, so those are right now the early indicators of the um, Oxford Invitational. Um, the early favorite has to be... The early favorite has to be... Um, the early favorite has to be in the boys' side of this meet. It has to be, um, it really has to be, um, Warren D. LaSalle, obviously, with the sprints. The distance, um, the distance part could be the most interesting one. And I think it could come down to is, you know, and then obviously in the throws, Wall Lake Western, you know, is going to be, going to be a, a power to reckon with. Um, also, you're going to have to deal with, um, you're going to have to deal with, um, um, you know, with Groves this year, Groves has had a really nice year this year. Um, and then you have, um, you know, so when you look at the Oxford Invitational, obviously you look at a lot of OA schools are in this meet, considering, you know, you really look at, um, you know, you look at how the league is. I mean, obviously it's a good idea. It's a good indicator to see, um, where each team is at. Um, um, where each team is at, and I think, you know, this, usually, I look at the Oxford invita Invitational as, like, a great indicator for, you know, because uh, it's sort of like a semi-kamikaze OA meet, um, but <laughs> you never know, I mean, like, you never know, I mean, like, obviously, you look at the teams that are going to be there, there's a lot of them that are going to be there, um, so some teams are keeping an eye on, obviously, on the boys' side is you got to take a look at is um is <laughs> is you got to take a look at um you know obviously Oak Park could be a player um but I think whoever distance team comes out on top is going to have a really good meet because the distance side of things is going to be where I think a lot of a lot of things are going to be. Um, so we'll see what happens.
I mean, we're going to see what happens in the distance side. Um, like I said, the Oxford Invitational, if you go, if you want to go out to a track meet um, this weekend, I would recommend the Oxford Invitational because there's a lot of good teams in there. There's a lot of, like, proven teams in there that I think could make some serious noise this year. And I think that'll be something to really, really watch for um, going forward there. Um, let's look at some other sports. I mean, obviously baseball. Um, when I look at baseball right now, um, I've got to give West Bloomfield props and I got to give Seaholm props because I think those are the two best teams right now in baseball because West Bloomfield really has, they've really performed expectation. Um, I know last year, this is a team that, you know, they won the red. Um, they want to get back. You know, obviously they had a very disappointing um, loss to Lake Orion last year in the um, district semifinals. Um, so when I look at West Bloomfield, they got the pitching. Um, they got some hitting. Um, I think with them, it's going to come down to is can West Bloomfield um, find a way, um, you know what I mean? Can they break through this year? And it looks like with their district coming up, they got a good chance to break through, make some noise, and I think they got a great chance to do it. So we'll see what happens. I mean, we're going to see what happens, um, you know, going forward there. And I think that um, that's going to be the case right there um, for West Bluefield is can they make some noise? I mean, that's the question. That's the question that, um, you know, that I have with them. Um, and then you look at, you know, Seaholm. Obviously, with Seaholm, I know coming in a couple weeks ago that I had a lot of people over there say, like, what about us? What about Seaholm? And, you know, they played Groves. Um, you know, they played Groves. Um, Groves and Seaholm, I would think right now, are, you know, like, they're battling for that. They're kind of bound for that semi two spot. And I really think with them, it's going to come down to if there's a team I can trust right now, Seahome's the team I can trust for a couple of reasons. Because one, I can trust them. I can trust Seahome basically um, with their pitching staff, with their hitting staff. I could trust them. The question that I have is, can Seahome, you know, get it done in the postseason? I mean, they've proven it. I mean, they have the facilities now. I mean, you if you ever go to, you know, if you go to Seahome, um, they got a whole new um, facility there. And it is nice. Their training, their facility there is nice. I mean... I haven't been inside it yet, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. I mean, it is absolutely nice. I've got to go in there sometime. I really got to go in there and see this new athletic facility. I mean, I looked at their baseball facility. They got lights. They can play games at night. I mean, if you have lights and you could play baseball on that, I'm going to tell you. I mean, like, then... You know, that's going to be a help big time. I know Avondale's got lights there. Um, I'm not sure about, um, I know Avondale for sure has got lights, but then I'm looking at Seaholm and I'm saying to myself, wow, they got a new scoreboard, new everything over there. I mean, I like what they did over there. They did a great design, great job over there. Um, I also know several places are getting like their fields done. I know Hurley Field is going to have a new field um, next year, um, which is going to be really interesting um, considering, you know, obviously with Berkeley, um, you know, Berkeley soccer. Um, then obviously, you know, Berkeley football is a team I'm really keeping a close eye on next year. But they're getting a new turf field done um, over there at Hurley. Um, you know, of course, it's not, I mean, Hurley Field. Is at as at as at Anderson Middle School's campus. Um, it's really not that far from um, it's not that far from um, you know Berkeley High School. I mean, it's a little short drive of Catalpa. 
I mean, like, on Catalpa. So, you know, so I'm very curious to see how that one goes. Really, really curious to see how that one goes. Um, and then <laughs> you look at, um, and then you look at, you know, I mean, obviously, when you look at um, teams to keep an eye on, I mean, we talk West Bloomby, we talk Groves and Seaholm. Um, I still think, you know, when you look at, you know, that district over at Lake Orion just might have opened up a little bit because Rochester took two from Lake Orion. And, you know, and obviously you looked at, you kind of thought early on that Lake Orion would be the favorite in that district in baseball. But that might not be the case now, especially with Rochester. Because, because Rochester, they got a, they got a proven hitter. Um... I think he's going to um I think he's going to Cleveland State next year. Um but I'll tell you, I mean they got a proven hitter and you know, that district just might get, might have got a little bit tough if you're Lake Orion. I mean, really have. Um so when I look at my top teams right now, my top 5 I would have to say right now, West Bloomfield number 1, I would have to put Seahome number 2, Grove 3. Um, Rochester, Rochester four, um, and then Lake Orion five. So that's my top five right now. Um, softball, you know, I'm still keeping, I'm still keeping to, to, um, tradition. I think Lake Orion, Stony Creek, the way that that team's been, obviously, um, I think with them, um, I think with them, um, and I'm looking at the coaches association rankings here. Stony Creek right now is in the top ten. Um, these are as of the 23rd of April. I mean, as of today, we're filming it today here. So, Stony Creek right now is ranked number ten um, in the top ten in the state. The, and I think a lot of that's Emily Flynn as Aaron Flynn. Um, Lake Orion is honorable mention. Um, you know, and I think that's interesting to see how that one goes. Um, and then you look at um and then you look at division two. I mean, like, um, not a lot to report in division two. I mean, not a lot from the old A side of things, but Stony Creek, with the way that team is built, they are built around pitching. They are built around pitching. And if a team can get to Flynn, Stony's in trouble. That's really what it is right now. And that's honesty there. Lake Orion can hit with anybody. They can pitch with anybody. A lot of questions, though. But Lake Orion right now, they're an honorable mention right now in softball. So that's kind of, you got to figure that out real quick. Is can they find a way, you know, can they find a way to um, build on that? That's the question. That is the question um, that I have with Lake Orion. Is no, that's the question I have. Is can they be consistent? That is going to be the key. That'll be the key. Um, track and field. Um, track and field rankings here. This is as of the seventeenth. Um, not a lot of OA schools ranked in Division One. Uh, Division Two. I don't see any any teams ranked um, there. Girls' side of things. Um, Girl side of things is as the seventeenth. Um, I don't see really any teams ranked in the OA right now. Um, in neither both boys or girls when it comes to track and field. Um, tennis. Um, let's see tennis here. Um, when you look at tennis here, um, in the um, in the top um of the seventeenth, obviously we talk Clarkston. They're the top team right now. Troy's number. Troy's fifth right now. Stony Creek six. Adams is ninth, and then there's a tie for tenth between three teams with Romeo, um, Port Huron Northern, and also Bloopy Hills is in there. Division two. C Holmes ranked two. North Farmington eight. Groves tied for tenth. So we'll see how that goes. See how that goes. Um, and then let's look at um. Then let's look at um. Let's see. Girls soccer. Um, obviously, when you look at... This is interesting. 
because Rochester was one of the teams I was high on. And they dropped the 12th after their loss to Clarkston. Um, Troy right now is ranked 5th. Troy Athens is ranked 7th. Adams is ninth. Um, Rochester is ranked 12th. So, team I'm wondering where the heck is in, in these rankings, where's Stony Creek at? I mean, they kind of must have got out to a, to a slow start or something. I mean, that's a little shocking to see Stony Creek not ranked in, your, in the top um, 15 in the state right now when it comes to soccer. So, it's a little bit mind-boggling to see where they're at right now. It's kind of mind-boggling to see where they're at. Um, not a lot of OA schools ranked in the, um, in, um, in the, um, not a lot of schools ranked in the, um, in, um, for, um, girls soccer right now from the other conferences. Um, obviously in lacrosse, you got Clarkston, Lake Orion that are ranked, um, in boys lacrosse. Lake Orion's coming off a really tough loss to Rockford. Um, girls lacrosse, you know, you got Birmingham. Bluefield Hills, um, Lake Orion's a team that's been mentioned. I mean, there's a lot of things here that are just, you know, we'll see what happens going forward um, when it comes to lacrosse. So a lot to look at going forward So when it comes to lacrosse. And I think it'll be very interesting to see how this goes um, looking forward. So final thoughts for the week here, obviously. We're going to keep an eye on um, on the basketball news going around. and. Um, Rochester, um, I don't think Rochester's named a coach yet for their girls program. Um, been looking at the um, MHA website, and um, they still have the non-assigned listed um, on their site. Um, you know, so that is going to be something to really keep an eye on there. Um, it'll be very interesting to see there. Um, also, I've heard rumblings at Bluefield Hills. Um, don't know if Kirsten Massey's back. Um, but we'll see. There's a lot of, and then obviously, of course, we talked earlier with Groves about, um, Allison Heidi stepping down over at Groves. Um, of course, um, Groves Athletics posted on their Twitter page. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward. Um, you know, we'll keep an eye on it for sure. And then the boys situation, boys basketball situation over at Birmingham Sea Home, um, you know, we're keeping an eye on that, on that job over there at Birmingham Sea Home. So there's a lot to look at, especially in the basketball side of things around the OA. So we'll see what happens going forward as we head into the, um, you know, we're heading into the mid stretches of the spring season. We're heading into May. Um, and then, you know, and then we're, we're not that far from June. So we'll see what happens going forward. I know we're in a big, big type of year. That's when we talk prom. We talk about, you know, we talk about, um, other things, um, obviously. Um, and then I forgot to mention um, golf. I mean, obviously, um, when I look at the golf rankings, um, pulling that up right now here, um, I think when you look at golf, I mean, obviously, the rankings, I mean, like, it kind of really, you know, it sets itself up. Um, it sets itself up. Um, it looks like they don't have the ranking yet. So, we'll see what happens. I mean, we'll see what happens. I mean, like, but they just don't have the rankings yet in golf. So, we'll see what happens um, going forward there. So, I just wanted to take yeah, another look at it here to see where everything's at. So, we'll see what happens going forward there. All right, we're going to sign off here. Um, make sure you um, follow the blog at saginawbay4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. Um, I've posted an update on the shortcomings um, considering the Grove situation. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward there. Um, all right, I'm going to sign off here. Um, also, I do have another, um, podcast this week, or, um, last three brain cells, um, podcast, um, with myself and Ian Weatherspoon. We're going to talk NFL draft. Um, so want to keep an eye on that. Um, I will post a link to that. So we'll get your thoughts on the NFL draft taking place this Thursday and in Detroit. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Take care. God bless. And I'll see you all next week, everybody. Take care, God bless you. See you all next week. God bless you.